All right, <clears throat> back to it. Um, the final video here in this um, tutorial on start to finish building uh, design with LT19. <clears throat> so one thing I wanted to notice when I last left you, I told you I was going to magic of television the other side of the circuit, and I did that. I basically copied everything we did here, but on this side. But I noticed something. <clears throat> so on all these LEDs that I moved to the other side, these this LED has just a pad that's not actually connected to any net name. And there's another one here that was the same way. Where is it? Oh yeah, right here. So these two LEDs don't have, they have a pad that has no air wire, it just has a, a pad number, nothing else. And that's usually a big red flag if something went wrong. So just to, just because I want to, you know, shame myself to reinforce not you know making mistakes again I guess on on videos um, I want to show you where this error is so when I was assembling this and maybe you saw this and you were screaming at your computer screen when I was doing this but I don't have the other end of this LED connected to this network here so I have this these these LEDs here I never actually finished connecting that so um, and I apologize if it was driving you nuts in the other video as you watched me pat myself on the back at a not working circuit and but we should be able to fix that pretty quick and then update the PCV okay and now that is a lot better so now we have two wires connected to each LED which is <clears throat> what we would expect that's we, we would expect to have that be the case so we're gonna need at least two wires connected to an LED to make it powered um, so I also, just so you know, I put the other thermistor over on this side. I cleaned up some of the annotations, so I just I just moved some of the some of the annotations around. I, we still have a little bit more work to do over here, some other little connections, but we're going to get to those in this video. But all I did from between the last video and this video is I copied what we did here over here, and I moved a couple of little annotations. I just sort of got it a little more tidy. I've always found when I'm doing annotations, and I'm checking to whether or not they look good. I always like to go into 3D view and just sort of say, okay, do, can I actually tell which part is which? This is R2, this is R1, R3, R4, and it looks like I pretty much can. Sometimes what happens is um, there's a lot of stuff on, when you're looking at a screen like this, there's a lot of stuff, and sometimes your mind starts to just, if two things are two different colors, it separates them pretty well, but sometimes when you actually look, they're kind of hard to see, and also sometimes it's not really clear in this view that we're not going to see this wire on the finished board because it's buried but we will see this pad because this pad is not buried so that's not always clear so it's always nice when you look in 3d to actually be able to tell okay yeah everything looks like it's going to be pretty visible it's going to be just fine we can tell there's no confusion there's no ambiguity as to which resistor is which resistor here everything looks like it's going to be all right this is switch one not to be confused with all the other switches on this board here so um, so anyway, I wanted to show that mistake that was there um, and just show you that little bit that I did. I, I'm, I'm trying not to do too much off camera, but sometimes, I, you know, if, if, if you can get the same thing by just rewinding the video and watching something twice, then I'm not going to waste your time with too much of that. So uh, I do want to add something else to this tree, though, because so, the idea behind this tree is that, um, so basically I have, you touch one thermistor and it turns on two of these lights, you touch the other thermistor, it turns on the other tube. Um, we have one light up here that's our charge light. That's going to be at the top of the tree. Um, but I, I want to have a couple more lights in here. I want to have a couple lights that are just always running when this thing is going. And we have a few options for that. So I could just power the LEDs right off the battery. So I could just power the LEDs here. Um, I don't like to do that with a lithium polymer battery because it's one thing if we're actually driving a certain current through the LEDs with like a current drive op amp design. It's quite another thing if we're just connecting a battery to a to an LED through a resistor as, as limiting current because as this as this lithium polymer battery starts to discharge, what's going to happen is as it discharges, we're going to get less and less voltage across that resistor. We're going to get the same voltage across the diode. So the current's going to drop through the LED. And so basically as the as the battery dies we're going to get slightly dimmer 
It's probably not a big deal. It probably wouldn't even be a visible deal, but I generally don't like it. It's the only reason I'm going to power the batteries off this regulated connection. And because I'm powering it off the regulated connect, I'm powering it off the boosted connection here. This is five volts. This is boosted to five volts. Five volts should be enough to power two LEDs in series. Probably what I'll do is make them like, you know, red, you know, red and green LEDs, something that don't have a huge forward voltage. So the forward voltage of a red LED is around 1.2 to 1.6 volts. The forward voltage of a green LED is 1.6 to 2 volts or so. So two of them in series is going to give us maybe three, 3.6 volts. That's plenty of overhead to power that with a five volt, with a five volt supply to have that to have a resistor that's going to limit the current. And it's going to be a regulated 5-volt supply, so everything should be fine. So let's just add that to our circuit. Let's just take, let's just add a couple of LEDs powered directly by VCC. So I'm just going to plop a VCC. And um, we'll just do something. I don't want to grab the other LED, so I'm just going to take my diode here and just do... And maybe we lucked out, and maybe that's DS2, DS3, DS4, DS5, DS6. We might be okay. We might be okay without having to re-annotate these, actually. Usually I don't like to do that, but... <clears throat> um, all right, so let's get, we'll do two at a time. I'm, I'm willing to put two in series for these constantly powered LEDs. And then let's put a resistor... Okay, looks good to me for our constant LEDs. Should give us something to work with. So let's just go ahead and annotate this. So it looked like we did have when it annotated when it when we did that shift, shift, slick, shift, click, um, and move, we we did have the highest numbered annotated LED, so it annotated the new ones just fine. And everything worked out all right. That's not always the case, though. So I'm gonna hit two, go back to this screen, and the only thing I'm gonna do right now is probably just I want to keep the other side of my board fairly uncluttered. So on the on the back side of the board, I just want to have LEDs. So I'm going to take these resistors, wherever I think these resistors are going to go. Um, I really don't know. They got to be, they have to have access to ground is pretty much it. So maybe this one can go here. I'm just going to put these sort of in the middle of my circuit, sort of. somewhere it'll be fine <clears throat> and then we can move these LEDs around later so these LEDs I'm gonna go and I'm gonna um, move flip okay so again that just put these on the back side of the board here um, now one thing to note is in the previous video I changed the annotation size of these so I changed these from 60 mil to, I think, 40 mil or something like that. But now these new parts that I added, they're back to the original 60 mil height. So my question is, how do I change the size of these? I could do them one at a time. 
could just click each one, double click it, go to properties, change you know the height to 40 mil and 8 mil or whatever it is that we had. Um, or I could be lazy and I'm always down for being lazy. So I'm going to click one, right click it, find single objects. And in this case, text the same, designator the same. But I got to be careful because I got to make sure I'm only grabbing the ones that are the, the right height. So I'm going to get all the ones that are 60 mil. And looking, yeah, that grabbed all of our new ones. Okay. And again, I'm going to go to properties, change these two. I think we did 40 mil and 8. Yeah, that looks about right. So. 40 mil and 8, and I will move these, these like that. And I, I might move these later. I'm not too worried right now. Um, so I have a couple things left to clean up here, um, a couple things left to route. The biggest thing is everything I have left to route pretty much is going to have to go through the back side of the board. So everything is going to need to have a connection to the other side of the board. Um, <clears throat> maybe I can this one here right now and I could probably do this one um, okay uh, this one has a ground it's not that easy to get to ground right now. I don't think ground's too accessible from here. I could take this all the way around and grab ground here. Um, so what I did is I basically, my ground line goes all the way around, powers the two op amps. VCC goes all the way through, powers the two op amps on the inside here. Um, I don't like wrapping a ground around. If I'm wrapping a ground all the way around a circuit, Typically, I just pour up. I just want to pour a plane. Maybe I'll end up doing it. I'm not sure. I'm not too worried about it right now. We'll, we'll get it taken care of later. Um, but maybe we can route this one at least. And again, this one didn't have to be thick. This is just a signal. This is just driving the gate at a transistor. But yeah, we'll still make it thick. So the reason I don't like to wrap a ground all the way around a circuit is think about it. Current on this ground line, if you if you take a conductor, like a ground line that gets a lot of current, and you wrap that conductor all the way around the circuit, every time you have a large amount of current draw on that, you essentially have one loop of an inductor. So you have one loop of an inductor, and if it's got current changing, you're basically, you have a ton of, of magnetic flux that's flowing in and out of the board. And that's going to get picked up by any other, any other circuit that makes a loop on here. So it's going to start to generate a lot of noise. You know, avoiding noise and avoiding... Re, you know, resistive drops is the reason people do ground planes. And I just, it's a topic for another video. I have lots of videos where I talk about those. I'm not going to do it here, but, you know, that's probably where you do it. It's gonna, this is going to work just fine, even with it wrapping all the way around if we end up doing that. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. So probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to route. I'm going to just try to route everything except for one easy thing here is we've got ground on a through hole here. So it's really not too hard to pop the ground through on the bottom side right here and make this connection. But for right now, I've got all my stuff in place. I've got all the components of my circuit. My, my electronic parts of the circuit are completely done now. So now I'm going to start to just look at the aesthetics of this thing, just moving my parts in place where I want them, making it look like the final tree that I'm looking to do. And to do that, most of the work is in moving these LEDs around it happens on the other side of the board. So I can do it right now, just sort of peering through the board, looking at these blue wires, looking at these blue pads on the bottom side. Or I can actually flip the board and just view the board from the other side completely. So you can see the lettering is backwards and stuff because we're seeing it through the board. So one thing I can do if I want to is I can go view, um, and I can go flip board. So if I flip the board, now I'm actually viewing the other side of the board. So I see RT1, DS3, right? These all look correct. Um, and I'm seeing, um, yeah, so I'm seeing the stuff on the bottom layer prominently and the stuff on the back, on the top layer reversed because I've just flipped my view of the board. And obviously it makes sense, right? If 
but we can't be flipped in you know, 3D, it's the same way. We can move stuff around in 3D also. Sometimes we can move things around in 3D. I generally don't like it. It's uh, I'm, I'm very likely to accidentally grab things and mess stuff up when I'm manipulating things in 3D. So usually what I'll do is I'll manipulate it in 2D and then see what I like and then and go from there. Okay, so first of all, I want to make sure that if we have different LEDs, they got different colors, I want to make sure these things are distributed around properly. So DS6 and DS7, I believe, were connected together. Let's go back and look. I'm going to save, too. I haven't saved in a while. Okay, so DS6 and DS7, they are connected. And I can have these be two different colors. I probably will. I'll probably have this be like a red and a green and this be a red and a green. It doesn't matter what order they're in, but because they're going to be two different colors, I'm okay with them being on the same side of the board. I'm trying to mix my colors around on this tree. So the resistor associated with DX6 and DX7 is, looks like it's R24 here. So... You know, I'm okay with, let's maybe put this one here and that one there. And then these other ones were associated with R25 down here. So maybe we'll put, I might end up wanting to move R25 too. But for now, let's put one of these lights over here and one of these lights over Here. And maybe just to make these a little more sort of, yeah, I'll put that here. And then maybe to make, I want to make these look a little more delightfully askew. I want this tree to look like it's got, yeah, so looking at the 3D view, so it's going to have the, this one, this one, this one, and this one always powered. So that's not great, actually. Really, let's try to move these things just like this. So, I'm gonna put one ornament on the tree here, one ornament on the tree over here. Let's do one. See, I always do that. Yeah, see, that's why I can't trust myself. Like it down low a little bit, but let's get the other one a little more towards the inside. Okay, but now we got one light here, one light here, one light here, one light here. That's pretty good. Let's kind of boom, 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 boom. Yeah, we got a couple lights on this tree. That'll be fine. Um, okay. So now, what about our other light? So one of these. Their misters is going to turn on a couple of lights. So let's go back and see which is which. So, so the thermistor, one of the thermistors turns on DS2 and DS3. And those are going to be the same color, so we want to probably spread those around here. So let's do DS2 and DS3. And then we got DS4 and DS5 of the other set. And actually, they're not in a bad position. DS4. And our DS4. You know, maybe I want to switch position of these.
was that? Uh, uh. I'll move these two really close to each other. DS2, DS8. Alright, you know what? <laughs> it is what it is. Let's see. You know what? That's going to look pretty good. It's going to look good. I'm going to move DS7 a little closer to the top of the tree. You know, decorating the tree is the, is the best part of the season, so I'm going to enjoy this. Okay, now DS1, this is that charge indicator LED. There's no reason for it not to be a little closer. We don't want it too close. We don't want, we don't want this thing too close to the edge, because then bad things can happen, but let's get it there. Okay. And our thermistor is looking pretty good. Let's take a final peek here. It's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good tree. Now we have a decision to make. Do we want to keep these annotations on here and make them go away? I don't know. I kind of like keeping them. I'm fine with People knowing that there's a circuit here. I might want to rotate it or maybe I'll be lazy and just leave it alone. But we got a little charge on the top of the tree and we got these lights that are delightfully placed here and they'll be different colors and this is going to be kind of nice. Um, maybe I want something else. Maybe I want to add a little flare here. If I want to add like a picture, so at the very least I want to add something that says it's mine. So let's just do that. Let's just keep it simple. Um, so let's add some text here that just lets the world know this is John's tree. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to set our layer to bottom overlay. And we're going to do place string. And I am going to tab. And let's mirror that. So it should show up correct, because we're looking at the bottom, so it should show up correct. We'll just do John on. Uh oh. John on. So I have to hit Shift Enter to make it make a, a new line. I'm going to say 2019. And maybe I'll set this to. Nice. Okay. Okay. So let's do that. Let's unpause this. And now we got our text here. I'm going to rotate it. Eh, it's not quite fitting. Maybe it'll fit kind of in the trunk like that. Wow. That's pretty good. You know, life, life is a series of compromises. Let's see what that looks like 3D. Yeah. Not great. But that's all right. It's it's fine. You can you can mess with text to make it look a little more a little more a little nicer. I'm not gonna spend too much time with it. You know, I kind of want a candy cane though. I kind of just I feel like it needs just at least one candy cane. Oops, I'm getting crazy with the bugs here. So I'm gonna draw a candy cane because I can. So it's gonna be um, still bottom overlay. Maybe we'll do a maybe we'll do a candy cane over next to this thermistor. So I'm just gonna place a line. And let's see how good I, I haven't tried to make a candy cane at all with this, with this software. So let's just see what kind of a candy cane it can make. Not not really great. Pretty rough candy cane here. Pretty rough candy cane. It's getting better. It's getting better.
18 strokes. Uh, this is really going to pay off. It's going to be a nice, yeah. Yeah, definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Let's take a look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that thing. That's nice. Big, fat, sugary candy cane. Loving it. Loving it. Um, okay. Maybe we move it. Yeah. Select that thing. Look what we got with that one, too. Oh. There we go. One thing you can do, too, is you got a bunch of stuff like this, you can right click it. Go union, you can go create union from select objects. Well, now, the cool thing is, you can grab one and move that candy cane around. And I wonder, do you rotate this thing? I don't play around with this stuff that much, so I'm always kind of curious. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. That's fine. I mean, I'm sure there is a way to rotate it. I just don't know what that way is. So. All right, put a little candy cane right there. Let's see. Boom. Oh, yeah, that really ties it together. I'm really liking this. This is That's a nice... Yeah, let's get... You know, I think we need a little more candy cane, actually. So, yeah, we definitely need more of this. So, I'm going to hit copy. you got to select where you're going to put, put that, and then... Get a little candy cane crazy here, folks. Everybody likes candy cane. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. This is what I was missing, is these candy. I mean, look at that. That just really... Happy holidays, everybody. That is looking great. So I'm pretty much about to wrap a bow on this thing and call this thing good. Um, but I still got some more routing to do, actually. So I got some last little pieces of routing here. Um, so I got to route all of these connections. So here's the thing. When we're down to this last little bit where we have all these little things that need to be connected, we can, we can route them if we want. Maybe we should just route them by hand. One option, though, is we can auto-route. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. I'm going to save everything. And I'm just going to take a peek at what at how, how good of a job auto-routing does. So auto-routing is basically where you let the software try to decide a path to connect all these things. And one of the challenges is auto-routing is only as good as the auto-router you pay for and the, and, and the, the rules that you've set for the auto-router. Sometimes if the rules are too strict, auto-routing doesn't work too well. So let's just try... Route, auto route, all. And then one other thing, I always like to, if it's not selected, I like to select lock all pre route. So basically, anything we've already routed, I want this thing to be okay. Now, this is throwing a fit here. Um, so it's throwing a fit. Basically, it's saying it's going to have troubles accessing some pins, and that's probably because our rules are not great. So, rule clearance, let's see. Sometimes it gives us a summary at the end. Warning rule width, width constraint, max 500, preferred 25. Preferred routing width is greater than some pad dimensions. Consider adding a new SMB neck round rule. Or we can change our preferred width. So, maybe we'll just change the preferred width. So, let's go to edit rules really quick. And if I'm going to change my routing width, This is the rule for routing width. Basically, this is saying the narrowest you can do is six mil because we're trying to keep this cheap. The widest is half an inch because pff, it's a little ridiculous anyway. Preferred is 25. The, route, the auto router is trying to do preferred and it's basically saying, you told me that preferred is 25 and I can't even, with 25 I can't even connect these pins. So just for now, let's just set it to 12. And it should be able to do that. But again, the key is before I play with any of these, I really want to um, I really want 
to save everything because sometimes it messes stuff up. So I saved before I did all this. So I changed that rule to 12 and now let's see. Again, lock all pre-routes. Um, and let's see what it does. Um, okay. Um, how'd it do? Not bad. I think it's actually okay. Um, a little worried about something. So let's, to, just to check how the auto route did, let's see how it looks. So let's check our rules. We always want to, when we're done, we want to do a manual check. And it looks like the rule violation is 94. Sometimes it's got some that don't really matter. Minimum solder mask sliver. I don't care too much about that. Silk to silk clearance, I definitely don't care about that. Silk to solder mask clearance, I definitely don't care about that either. So, um... I'm, this is pretty good. I'm not considering this to be too bad. I think we're pretty, in pretty good shape here. I think it auto routed okay. I'm a little worried about though these yeah, connections. Because that's looking a little tiny to me. So 20 mil diameter, 13 mil hole. So sometimes that's a little small. I think Bosch Park is okay with 20 mil diameter, 13 mil hole. I think what I want to do though is I want to just to be safe change this to 27 mil and rerun this thing. So I want to rerun this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo the auto route, just control Z, undo that auto route. And I'm going to go to tools, um, design rules, and I'm going to set my via or via, depending on how French or not French you are. Yes, so minimum diameter I want to set to 27 mil, just to be sure, prefer 27, just to be for sure that 13 mil hole should be fine, and then click apply. Okay, now we're going to re, we're going to redo the route. So, route. And again, we still I think we still had that original one that was saved. So we're gonna do an auto route all again, lock all pre-routes, no warnings beforehand. Let's give it a shot. Okay. So it looks like it used the bigger connections. It looks like everything was okay. Um yeah, let's check the rule violations. What is going on here? Oh, come on. Why is it doing that? Why is it routing like that? Driving, what is going on here? Why did it do that? It didn't have to do that. So, man, that's what I'm saying. Auto routes, like, you get what you pay for. It. This is just weird. Um, like, they didn't have to get, they didn't have to cut it this close here. I'm just going to clean up most of this. Sorry. There are some elements in this. Clean this up a smidge. Oh, what is going on here? I don't know what's going on. This one, I understand. We kind of don't have much of a choice here because we. But I can space this out. Mm -hmm. That's okay. All right, 
Let's see what else we got to clean up. Let me know. It needs to cut it close. There's no reason for it to cut it this. I think it doesn't see an issue with the clearance, but I kind of do. It's having a little fun with the auto route, and that's okay. Okay. This looks all right. I think this is going to be fine. So let's take a peek. Yeah, I think this is going to be just fine. I think it's going to work out just great. So um, let's do our design rule check. I'm going to set my grid back. Yeah, one silk to silk clearance. I don't care about that. So the silk, silk clearances, don't, they don't matter. Um, so we're looking pretty good. We're in pretty good shape then with this design. One thing I might do, if you look, right, anywhere where they had these connections, these vias, vias, um, they're exposed. So they, they, you're going to see exposed metal. So a lot of times I like to tent these. So tenting them is pretty easy. Um, if you want to actually, I'm also going to move some of this around. Just the auto route, cut it a little close. I just, no reason for that. If the fab's a little sloppy, you're going to have exposed metal there, and it's you're going to run a risk of accidentally hitting that. Check again. Yeah. Violations. Yeah, just silk stuff. We don't care about silk stuff. Okay, um, so we're pretty much done. Um, this design is, we'll call it good. And I mean, how could you not call it good? Look at that. That's gorgeous. Um, I think I've got everything. I might have forgotten something. Again, you could be yelling at your screen. I think this is going to be just fine though. So now what we're going to do is we're going to export this for fabrication. So to export this for fabrication, uh, let's go back to the board view. First of all, we're going to save everything. File, save all. And now we're going to go, one thing we want to remember is what our out board outline was. Our board outline was layer um, mechanical 12. So let's keep that in mind. Um, so we're going to go file, Fabrication outputs, Kerber files. So we're going to do 2 to 5 ratio format, inches is fine. Layers. All right, what layers do we need to export from the fab? For a two-layer board, we need the top overlay. We don't need the top paste. That's going to be the paste mask, and I think we're just going to assemble these by hand. So we don't, need a st we don't necessarily need a stencil. It doesn't hurt us to, to add it. but So we need three top things. Three bottom things, which no paste. Um, we need also mechanical 12. Why do we need mechanical 12? That's the layer that our board outline was on. So we're going to grab mechanical 12 too. And click OK. OK. So this is the export. So this is the Gerber visualizers. This is viewing all of these different things here. Um, so um, this is all the layers ultimately that the fab's going to see. What's missing though is the drill hole. So we got to go back to um, our board and we also have to go file fabrication outputs and see drill files. So we're going to do two to five also inches. I like to keep leading and trailing zeros. Reference relative origin, that should be fine. Optimize, not optimize. I think it's most most fabs are gonna do their own optimization anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And let's click OK. Okay, and now these are all the holes that are gonna have to be drilled. Um, oh, I didn't go back, I didn't do tenting. Ah, I didn't talk about tenting. Okay, well, we get to redo the fab files here. So if we want to tent. These, what we can do is we can click one, we can go find some more objects. We can make sure they are all the same. Any, apply, boom. So that's going to find all of our fields here. 
um, and then click OK. And one thing we can do, so with all of our views selected, we are going to go down to Tented. We're going to tent the top and the bottom. And then what that's going to do is when you look at these now, these are going to be covered with solder mask. So, so some people like to leave them untented. Some people like to tent them. I'm doing a Christmas tree that's got gorgeous candy canes. I mean, really good. Candy. Look at that. For a quick candy cane, that's great. I'm really proud of myself right now. I'm feeling good. Um, so, oh, a couple things. We want to know which side is our battery positive, which side is our battery negative. Ah, we got to leave ourselves indicators to tell us which side of the battery is positive and negative. So always remember stuff at the end here. So I'm going to view, I'm going to go back to viewing the top layer of the board. Okay, so we're, I, I want to label this battery connection and just say, just like with a plus or minus or something that just tells me which side of the battery is plus and which is minus. So um, I'm going to do... Probably I'll just put a little plus here. So we're going to choose our layer to be top overlay. And place a string. And our string is just going to be a plus sign. Okay. And then I'm just going to pop that plus sign there. And then when we view this, that's just going to say, when we're hooking, when we're hooking up this battery, we know. Oh, oh man, what is wrong with me today? I'm doing good candy canes, but I'm having trouble rotating this thing. That is going to tell us blah, that our positive battery terminal has got to be connected to this side, and obviously our negative has got to be here. But it's just a little visual indicator. Okay, now that I changed everything, let's go back and export these layers again. I didn't change any drill holes, so that should be fine. Uh, maybe I'll export them anyway. Fabrication outputs, Gerber files. So it should save all of our settings from before. So, okay. Yeah. And then um, let's, just, let's do the drills again. It's fine. Fabrication output, NC drill files. Looks all good. And okay. Okay. Now let's go to our project folder. If we go to um, outputs, this is where my final project. So if I look in my outputs folder that was created by doing that process, I got all this stuff. So one thing is the GM12 this is what had our board outline. I'm going to change the name of the board outline from GM12 to GKO. That tells us the keep out layer. Why didn't we just make the outline of the keep out layer? Well, the problem is keep out layers in different software are used for different things. In some, like an eagle. The keep out layer is used anytime you're just trying to say, please don't put stuff inside this area of the board. The keep out layer is not dedicated only to the outer edge of the board. And so when people have imported parts or, or project, you know, when people have imported things from other software into Altium, sometimes it has, sometimes parts will have regions of them with a keep out layer. So I found keep out layer is not the most reliable way to, to generate an, ex an, an exterior of a board. Um, so in this case, I just picked mechanical 12 because I knew it wasn't going to be used for anything. It seemed to work out all right. What files do we need? And the text file is our drill, our drill holes. So we're going to hit that. We're going to hold control and we're going to get a couple of other stuff, right? Top silk, top overlay, top layer, keep out, bottom silk, bottom overlay, bottom layer. That is it. These are our eight magical files. So we have a board outline, drill files, and then three layers for both the top and bottom side of the board. What are those three layers? They're the actual copper pattern. They're the, um, the solder mask for the overlay layer. And they're the, oh, sorry, they're the solder mask layer and the overlay layer. So basically, so basically the silk screen. So we have silk screen, solder mask, and copper. Those are the three layers on each side that we have to specify. So we're going to take all these and we're just going to zip them up. So I'm just going to do... Send to compress zip folder. Okay, and I'm just going to do John Tree for now. We'll just call it that. Okay, so this has all the files that a fab is going to need for fabrication. Now let's verify that this actually is what it says it is. So, um, Don't look at my tabs. 
This is my personal laptop. Don't look at the tabs. Don't look at the tabs. So we're going to check our design with Osh Park. So I don't, I don't know if we have to sign in or not. Um, we can take our file, though. And we can go. Okay, looks good to me. It passed. So basically, the board it says correcting drill precision was wrong. Verify drills aligned correctly. Everything looks aligned correctly to me. Pass the design. The key thing here is, one of the things, this tells us our overall board dimensions. We can buy this right now from Osh Park if we want. We can get it probably a little cheaper from China, but Osh Park has really high quality boards. They're gold pads. Um, they're really production quality boards you get from Osh Park. Um, and so I, I order a lot of stuff from here, um, but if I'm doing a lot or big orders or I'm trying to keep it really cheap, I might do it from China, but I still like also that it just gives you the overall dimensions, 80.2 millimeters by 70.2 millimeters. I'm actually going to go back to my design, and I'm going to say John Tree, and I'm going to say 81 millimeters by, so this is 81 by 71, just to round up. And then I want this to be green and one ounce copper. Perfect. Okay. So that's it. Um, I exported my board files. I did the inspection check through Osh Park. It passed at least Osh Park. Um, so as long as you make sure your rules are fairly reasonable, if it passes Osh Park, it's usually good at a lot of other fabs. Although Osh Park's gotten better in terms of the resolution they accept. And I specified I want my tree to be green, one ounce copper. Um, if you're trying to keep it cheap, it's got to either be green, yellow, red, blue, white, or black. And the blacks I don't really like because they have troubles in the oven. And it's pretty much got to be one ounce copper. So now this is a finished project. We have um, a finished exported board, labeled zip file. If I were doing this for a class, I would just send this file directly to um, me or to whoever was um, doing was making this for me, and I'd consider it good. So thanks for watching the video start to finish. Hope you like the tree and those candy canes were really nice. So if you like the candy canes, you gotta smash that like button and smash subscribe. So thank you everybody for watching.